Hey dude, dude the Builder here, and in this episode of Zigmaster, we're going to be taking a look at what's known as uh, struct layout in memory. We've already seen um, that in our programs, we need uh, some way to access memory and store values in memory. Uh, we have variables and constants, and depending on whether it's a variable or constant, um, we will be accessing different parts of the virtual address space. Um, if it's a constant, it's in the static area. And if it's a var, it's going to be in uh, the stack. If it's a local variable and in the static area, if it's a global variable or a container level variable. We've also seen that the type of that uh, variable or constant is going to determine how much space in memory um, the type basically will will dictate how much space we, we will be using in those areas of memory. And we've seen, for example, a data structure like an array where we have several elements of the same type. And in memory, those elements would, would be placed one after another. And uh, the alignment of the type, um, the that, that natural alignment or the alignment that, that you can specify explicitly, will determine um, how those elements would be placed one after another. In the case of a struct, since we can have fields of different types, um, this, this uh, idea of how to place them in memory isn't so simple. And uh, there are several approaches to this, uh, which Zig covers um, in, in different ways, depending on the type of struct. We've only seen up till now the native zig struct type. Um, in the previous video, we covered that, and this video is going to be covering the memory layout of that native zig struct type. Okay. Later on, we will we will talk about uh, pack struct and extern struct, which have a different memory layout, and we'll cover those uh, when when we uh, reach those topics. So to begin with, let's say that we have this struct S which has three fields, A, B, and C. And let's say that A is a, is a U8, which would be a one byte uh, field, uh, basically with an alignment of one. We have B, which is a U32, which takes up four bytes and has an alignment of four. And we have C, which is a U8, once again, one byte, an alignment of one, okay? And once again, we have uh, this hypothetical memory area here, starting at um, address uh, uh, FF00, going all the way up to FF08. So we basically have eight bytes here of memory. Now you might think that given that we have here, the first field of this struct is a byte. Okay, we also have a byte here, in the, the field C. And um, the alignment of field B is going to be four. So we have uh, alignment one, alignment four, alignment one. So basically we could uh, put these different fields in practically any, any of these addresses. Uh, we, the, 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 the single byte fields we could put anywhere. And the, the alignment four field, field B, we would have to uh, put in uh, one of these uh, four byte boundaries, zero, zero, or zero, four, or zero, eight, and so on, okay? So uh, we could think that possibly one thing that could happen is that we could place our first A field here in uh, address uh, zero, zero, uh, that would occupy just one byte. Then we have to put field B at a four byte offset so we could put it here in address uh, ending in 04 that occupies four bytes. And then field C would go after that. It just takes up one byte and it's at address ending in 08. And here we have um, these three bytes is what is known as padding. Okay. This, these three bytes are part of the, the memory area taken up by the struct, but they don't actually have data. They're just uh, filling up the space necessary to place this second field in its four byte boundary um, according to its alignment, okay? So what happens here is that um, this, this struct, even though we have this field C over here taking up one byte, 
we would need after this bite we would need another three bytes uh, of padding after field C um, in order for um, if we were going to place another one of these structs let's say in an array of, of these structs um, the next one would have to be uh, at a four byte boundary because uh, a struct will take the alignment of its largest alignment of, of the fields okay so if we move back here the largest alignment of this struct is four so the alignment of the struct itself is going to be four and this basically makes it uh, so you avoid problems if you choose the alignment for example of the byte to be the alignment of the struct that means you could put the struct anywhere but then you would have the problem that um, uh, finding a, a, a memory, a four byte boundary for the B field could, could become difficult, okay? And, and it could cause your struct to be uh, really inefficiently uh, structured in memory. So um, once again, with this type of um, uh, use of memory for the struct, uh, the struct would basically end up uh, having a size of 12 bytes because we would have these four bytes here with the three bytes of padding the four bytes taken up by the u32 then the single byte and we would need another three bytes after this uh, so the next struct would be at a four byte boundary okay but zig is not going to do that um, as i said the struct is going to have uh, the natural alignment of its largest uh, natural alignment in this case it's four Okay, so this struct can only be placed at a four byte boundary, as we can see here. So these, this, we no longer have the liberty to place it anywhere in memory. And what's going to happen is that Zig is going to rearrange the fields uh, in a way that it can make the most optimal use of the memory. It, it'll, it's going to put, for example, it's going to place uh, field B first. Um, it can put it here at the 0, 0 address because that would be at a 4 byte boundary. It'll take up 4 bytes. Then it can put field A next at precisely this uh, 0, 04 address. Then immediately it can uh, place field C, which is another byte, alignment of 1, at address 0, 05. There's no problem with that. And then you only have 2 bytes of padding in order for the next uh, struct, uh, possibly if we were dealing in an array of these types of structs, it could be placed at this four byte offset at address ending in 08, okay? So Zig will basically uh, handle the most optimal um, allocation here of, of memory for the struct, um, taking into account the alignment of the struct, which will be the largest alignment of, a, of all of its fields, okay? So, if uh, let's go, let's move over to uh, terminal to look at this in code. I have here precisely. I'm defining that struct just like we just saw with our fields A, B, and C. And here I'm I'm defining this little layout function. It's a utility function. It's going to take a pointer, a constant pointer, to uh, one of these types of structs. I'm going to be using here. Um, Several built-ins. In this case, first of all, the size of built-in will tell us the size of this type. Uh, the align of will tell us the alignment. And then we're going to be using here a little um, comp time uh, inline 4 because we're going to be dealing directly with the fields and the types uh, of the fields here. Um, first of all, we're going to be once again seeing the size using once again the built-in the size of. We're going to be taking a look also at the offset, and this is the byte offset of the field in memory uh, from the base offset of the struct itself. Okay, so there we can see uh, more or less where these fields are being placed, and uh, we'll see the alignment, and finally we're going to see the actual memory address. Okay, so here in main we're just defining here. Uh, an instance of this, uh, the constant s, and we're passing in a pointer to that constant, uh, to that constant, uh, to our layout utility function. So uh, let's build and run this. And as you can see here, 
it's indeed telling us that the size of s is 8. Okay? So, as we saw in uh, the presentation, it is making an efficient use of memory. Uh, the alignment indeed is 4, because that's the, line, the alignment of uh, the largest alignment of all the fields is 4. And here we have uh, field A. It's telling us that the size is 1. It'll take up 1 byte in memory. And uh, the offset is 4. Okay? Um, here the alignment is 1. And the address uh, ends in F10. Okay? Now field B has a size of 4. We'll take up 4 bytes. And the offset is 0. So as we saw, um, Zig is reordering the field. It's, it's putting uh, field B first in memory. And we see this also in the address. It's, it's, it's ending in 0C. If you add 4 bytes to 0C, you're going to get 10. Okay, so um, B comes first in memory, then we have the address of A. And uh, A ends in 10, and guess what? C ends in 11. So C comes just after A, as we saw in the, in the presentation. Once again, we have the size 1, alignment 1, and the offset is 5. Okay, so as you can see, this is the demonstration in actual working code that uh, in the case of a native ZIG struct, ZIG will uh, reorder the fields as necessary in order to obtain uh, the most efficient use of memory and, and, and try to reduce um, uh, the, the need for padding uh, as much as possible. What this also means is that you have no guarantee of the order of fields in memory, of, of how that, that struct is going to be structured in memory, okay? So you can't depend on any field coming first or second. Um, you have to check um, by using the, these built-ins. You, you can see uh, actually what, what offset any given field has, but... Um, if you need guarantees in terms of the memory layout of a struct, then you can't use the native ZIG struct. Um, you, you, you do have the option to use one of the other struct types that we will be seeing later on, uh, namely the uh, pack struct and the extern struct. Okay, so with that, that's basically what I wanted to cover in this uh, video. I hope you find this useful. Do the builder here. I'll see you in the next one.